Hallelujah. God is good. And a blessed Good okay. Friday uh, to all of you, my brothers and sisters. Paul says, Bible says in Galatians chapter 6 verse 14, that we should glory only on the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, 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 Paul, Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 23, we preach Christ crucified. Yes, the cross should be the main oh, motto of our life, of our messages. So let's uh, think about the Lord Jesus Christ when he was betrayed by his own disciple, Judas. He was sold, yes, by his own disciple. My brothers, my sister, are you being betrayed by your, by your own family members, by your own relatives, by your own friends, your neighbors, your colleagues? Jesus knows the pain of betrayal. Because he himself was betrayed by his own disciple who lived with him, who stayed with him. The night when Jesus was betrayed, the soldiers came to arrest him. And the whole night he couldn't sleep. Before his arrest, while he was praying in the garden of Gethsemane, Bible says, his sweat fell down as a great drop of blood for you. For you, he experienced every anguish, every anxiety, every pain, every sorrow. Oh, he says, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. He was fearful. He was in agony and pain, the fear of death was tormenting him. Luke chapter 22 verse 42, 44 says, in Matthew chapter 26 also, he, it says Jesus was, oh, in great agony, in great anguish, in great sorrow, his uh, sweat uh, dropped uh, like a great drop of blood. Medical science, medical scientist says when someone is under excruciating, extreme pressure, blood pressure, the blood oozes out. Jesus went through that sorrow, through that suffering, through that pain, through that pressure. Bible says, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9, death is bitter. For you, my brother, for you, my sister, Jesus experienced the bitterness of death. Are you facing a dreaded disease? Are you facing mental pressure, mental tension, anxiety, anguish, sorrow, shame, sickness? Or you are bounded by sinful habits, addictions? Good news, great news, your savior. Your lover went through that pain, went through that shame, went through that sorrow. His soul was exceedingly sorrowful just to understand you, your pain, your anguish, your anxiety, the pain of betrayal he experienced for you. Bible says in Isaiah chapter 52, Isaiah chapter 53, Verse 2 and 3, Jesus became a man of sorrows just to give you peace, my brother. Just to give you peace, my sister. That's why he's called Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. And he gives his matchless peace, uh, oh, which the world cannot give. John chapter 14 verse 27 says, Oh, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Do you know, the world giving peace by film, by pornography, by adultery, by drinking, smoking, gambling, all kind of vices the world offers, the fun, the parties that offer, that is temporary. 
that is temporary only for few minutes few hours few days but the joy of the lord is from everlasting to everlasting bible says in his presence there is fullness 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 of joy psalm 16 verse 11 first peter chapter 1 verse 8 says oh he gives joy unspeakable and full of glory and you know this my brother know this my sister the joy of the lord is your strength yours your strength your battle belongs to the lord you're not battling the evil the crooked the, the wicked jealous opposers critics all alone lord god is with you the one who went through the suffering in the garden of gethsemane he is praying for you he is praying lord protect my son protect my daughter from the danger from the diseases from discouragement from disappointment from depression he is praying hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 Romans chapter 8 verse 34 says 24 by 7, 365 days. He's praying. Let's go to the night where Jesus was betrayed. Oh, his sweat fell like great drop of blood. He experienced excruciating, oh, extensive, extreme pressure. Are you going through blood pressure your blood pressure is not being controlled even by taking medicine good news great news jesus went through that blood pressure he shed the great drops of blood his sweat fell down as a great drop of blood for you to heal you to heal you to heal you oh take it take it take it receive it receive it the healing power of jesus is flowing my brothers my sisters whenever the cross of Jesus Christ, the sorrows, the sufferings of Jesus Christ on the cross, the crucified Christ, the champion of the cross, the lover of the cross is preached. He comes, his presence comes and when his presence comes, in his presence there is healing divine. In his presence there is fullness of joy. Oh, in his presence there is comfort, there is peace. Take it, take it, take it. Um, when the morning came, whole night he didn't sleep, Jesus Christ. Soldiers mocked him, ridiculed him. More than 600 soldiers slapped him, plucked his beard, buffeted him, put, blindfolded his eyes and slapped him, smote him, buffeted him and asked prophecy who bet you who slapped you such shame such mockery such ridiculous ridicule he went through you he was reviled he was oppressed he didn't open his mouth because he loves you he loves you he loves you, my brother. He loves you, my sister. He loves you deeply and dearly. You are precious. <laughs> he was pitted. Psalm, Isaiah chapter 50 verse 6 says, He didn't hide his face from being spitted. 600 soldiers mocked him, begged him mercilessly, slapped him, buffeted him, plucked his beard for you. He understand your pain, your tooth pain. He was buffeted. He was smitten up, beaten up mercilessly. He understands your pain. That's why he will deliver you. He will be moved with compassion and love. Right now, right now as you are listening, his healing power is touching your body, in your room, in your houses, wherever you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 14 says, Oh, his face was marred. He was disfigured beyond human recognition. Songs of Solomon says, 
Jesus Christ is altogether lovely. He is beautiful, majestic, marvelous person. Jesus Christ, Rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, but on the cross, his face was marred beyond human recognition. He was disfigured. Why? 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 He was broken. He was bruised. He was bloodied. He was bleeding to build you up, to beautify your life. Cheer up, my brother. Cheer up, my sister. Are you broken? Broken in your heart? Broken in your body? Broken in your homes? Jesus Christ, the rebuilder. Oh, the restorer, the renewer, oh, hallelujah, the renovator will rebuild you, renovate you, refresh you. Praise him, praise him, magnify him. Psalms 129 verse 3 says, his back was plowed like a field is plowed. Psalms 22 verse 17 says, I can count all my bones. Jesus was beaten with 39 stripes. Each stripe had nine cords, iron hooks. And each beating, each stripe when beaten on the back of Jesus Christ will pluck out the flesh. His flesh was torn apart for you, for you, for you. For you, take it, take it, take it. For your healing, for your deliverance. Uh, Bible says in Matthew chapter 8 verse 17. He himself took all our infirmities. He carried, he bore all our sickness. Yes, he loves you. He loves you. His flesh was torn apart for your healing. That's why Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55, 53 verse 5. By his wounds you are healed. By his stripes you are healed. Yes. He was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his stripes we are healed. Yes. Yes, uh, every mental agony, every mental anguish, every sorrow, every pain, every suffering, shame. He suffered for you to deliver you, to save you, or to redeem you. Hallelujah. Every pain will go because he took uh, the pain of the nails. When the Roman soldiers bet him mercilessly by the stripe and the nails were driven um, on his uh, palms, on his feet. You can imagine, even a small thorn pinches in our body, how much, how excruciating the pain it is. But Jesus, that big nails was hammered on his palms, on his hands, on his feet. But he didn't open his mouth. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 7 says. But he didn't open his mouth. Why? In order to understand your pain. When you say, I'm suffering. I'm unable to sleep due to headache. I'm not able to sleep due to my tooth pain. My back is paining. My joints are paining. My knee is paining. He understands the pain. Because Jesus carried 150 kg of cross, 150 kilogram of heavy, rugged cross. Oh, to the uphill, to the hill of Golgotha, he carried. So many times he fell down, unable to carry 150 kg of heavy, rugged cross. He understands your pain. He took the pain of stripes, 39 stripes, each stripe having nine cots, iron hooks, it will pluck out the flesh. His bones were visible. Yes, the crown of thorns were placed. Was with a rod. He was beaten on his head. The crown of thorns pierced in on his head. His eyes was filled with blood. Why? Why? 
बाइबल स्कॉलर से लॉन्ग शॉप पेनफुल थॉन्स वर देयर जीसस didn't open his mouth in order when you cry lord my headache i am fed up with my headache my back is paining my knee is paining my joints are paining i am suffering with cramps asthma pains meningitis polyitis arthritis i am unable to walk move my hands move my fingers he will be moved with compassion he will remember Oh, on the cross, oh, 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 I took all the pain of my children, and He will heal you. You will become pain-free. You will become pain-free. You will become pain-free. All pain will be gone. Will disappear. Will disappear. Every small swelling, every pain, every extra growth will dissolve. Will go away. Will disappear. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The first word he said, "Lord, forgive them, for they don't know what they do." Yes, that's the power that Jesus wants to give us right now. The power to forgive our enemies. Matthew chapter five, verse forty-four to forty-six. Jesus encourages us to forgive our debtors, those who offend us. Forgive them. and the lord jesus will also forgive us colossians chapter 3 verse 13 says forgive e- each other yes if we don't forgive unforgiveness is like a prison and a poison remember this unforgiveness is like poison and prison you are poisoning you are harming yourself if you don't forgive okay he has offended he has done wrong tell him on his face tell him you can shout at him also no problem but don't keep in your heart your heart should be crystal clear pure that's why bible says jesus has said matthew chapter 5 verse 8 blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god you shall see god we know 23rd january 1999 Graham Stains and his two young sons, ten years old, six years old, Philip and Timothy, were burnt alive. They were missionaries serving among the lepers in Odisha. They left their luxurious life in Australia. They came to the poorest or poor region of Odisha, serving among the leper people, but. the evil people the jealous people the wicked people burned them alive and his widow gladys stains what she said after her husband and two young sons were burnt alive she said by the power of jesus by the love of jesus i forgive the killers of my husband and my two sons her statement that i forgive was published in all the news channels in all the newspapers times of india india express indian express hindustan times dainik bhaskar so on and so many of the high caste people brahmins vaishyas they were astonished surprised hey, how come she is able to forgive and they become oh very much interested and they read some of them borrowed bible they bought bible purchased bible and read and received jesus by her act of forgiveness to the killers of her husband and to young son it was painful but from the cross what jesus said forgive them that's the power jesus wants to give you right now my brother my sister are you not able to forgive your family members your relatives your friends your colleagues who have betrayed you who have ditched you who have deceived you who looted your property who have stolen your property your money your jewelry god is the vindicator he will vindicate he will avenge 
and bible says in hebrews chapter 10 verse 30 vengeance is mine i will repay it's god's job to repay them and he will bring back whatever the losses you have gone through through those betrayed people through those wicked people through those evil cheaters thieves they might have stolen your property your jewelry your finances but jesus christ will fight for you vengeance belongs to him says bible hebrews chapter 10 verse 30 oh yes romans chapter 12 verse 19 also says we have to forgive and that's the power jesus wants to give to us and next second verse jesus said to uh, to his neighbor the thief one the one who cried lord remember me when you come into your kingdom jesus assured him today today surely 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 you will be with me in paradise in heaven you will become a citizen of heaven yes jesus loved his neighbor the one who cried for his help jesus helped him in spite of his weakness in spite of his both hands nailed feet nailed nailed both feet nailed he was not able to breathe properly in spite of all the weakness and the pain and the anguish he said the word of comfort today only you will be with me in paradise jesus loved his neighbor the thief jesus encourages us exhorts us to love our neighbors matthew chapter 22 verse 39 says so and the next third verse jesus said to his dear mother to her weeping mother to her, his weeping beloved disciple john to his beloved disciple john he said behold the son my son this is your mother and to her weeping mother beloved mother mary jesus said mother this is your son yes jesus spoke words of comfort he didn't la- leave them comfortless john chapter 14 verse 18 says i will not leave you comfortless i will come to you jesus comforted his mother and his beloved disciple when his oh hands were nailed feet was nailed oh the crown of thorns was pierced on his head and the blood was oozing out oh the blood uh, had filled his both eyes he was not able to see properly to open his eyes properly but in spite of that pain excruciating pain agony anguish physical torture he remembered his sorrowing mother he remembered his sorrowing beloved disciple john and comforted them don't you think my brother my sister he will comfort you surely surely jesus christ will comfort you because he's a god of all comfort hallelujah he's a god of all comfort another thing the bible says by this words jesus was declaring and exhorting and encouraging us that we should care for our family members first timothy chapter 5 verse 8 says he who calls himself believers but he if he doesn't care about his own family members he's worse than an unbeliever he's worse than an unbeliever we should care we should love our family members check up your heart my brother my sister jesus cared for his mother for his beloved disciple are we caring for our family members check up check up your hearts check up your actions then jesus said oh why next word why have you forsaken me to father to his father he cried out he knows the pain of being forsaken do you say i'm all alone in this world 
Nobody cares for me. Nobody loves me. There is hope for you. Jesus said in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, I will never leave you nor forsake you, my son. My daughter, I will never, never, never ever leave you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8 also says so. Yes, he promised, he promised never to leave you, never to leave you alone. No, never alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave you, never to leave you alone. The fifth word he said, I am thirsty. Ho oh, from a whole night from the garden of Gethsemane after taking the last supper. Jesus didn't eat anything, didn't drink. Even a small cup of water. He was thirsty, physical pain, physical agony. He understands. Are you suffering in your body, in your physical body? In your finances, you might not be having money to purchase the groceries, to purchase the essential items for your family. Jesus became a man of sorrows, a man. He became poor to make you rich. Bible says 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9, Jesus became poor to make you rich, although he was so rich. He became poor. He was born in a manger. He had no clothes on the cross. Even the last tunic the soldiers took. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. Jesus was hungry. Jesus was thirsty. Bible says in John he was thirsty. He was hungry in Mark. Bible says he was hungry. He knows the pain of hunger and thirst. That's why he says, I am the living water. He that believes on me, out of his belly shall flow the rivers of living water. Yes, rivers of living water. That is the Holy Spirit. He will quench every thirsty soul. Are you thirsting? Physically, spiritually? He said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Are you thirsting for his face, for seeking him, for seeking his presence, for seeking his power? He says, I will fill you. I will fill every hungry soul, every thirsty soul. According to Isaiah chapter 44 verse 2 and 3, he will pour out his spirit upon all the dry land. Upon every thirsty soul. Are you thirsting? For his presence. His presence will fill you. Fill your life. When uh, a great uh, woman of God. Called Catherine Kuhlman. Uh, whenever she walked. Whenever she entered a hall. Or a room. Uh, people. Began falling down on the ground. Due to the presence of God. My first, my second uh, soul one. When I came to Christ, I had a great burden that my family members, my relatives, my friends, my hostel mates should be one for Jesus Christ. They should know the love and compassion power of Jesus. So my first soul saved in the hostel was Anuj Kapoor. And he was a chain smoker. Every 10 minutes, smoke, cigarette, cigarette, so many packs of cigarette. He used to drink. He used to use foul languages. He used to go for movies. But after accepting Jesus, when I cried for him, when I prayed for him, and why did I share the gospel? Jesus changed him, transformed him. And he began to wake up early in the morning, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. And he used to pray and read the Bible. And then in the hostel, among the 300 young engineering students, we were living. And the power of 
God came and whenever he used to shake hands or meet the hostel mate, roommates, the seniors, they used to feel, oh, when Anuj shakes the hand, some power, current is passing. How come? Shock they were feeling. That time I was not knowing about that uh, woman of God, Catherine Kuhlman, that in her ministry also people used to be falling down because of the thick presence of God. Yes, when you are thirsty for the presence of God, His presence will fill you and will spread uh, through your body, through your life, wherever you will, wherever you will go, you will spread the revival fire. Revival fire will be spread through your life. The fragrance of the love and the power and the compassion of Jesus Christ will flow through you. The sixth word Jesus said from the cross, it is finished. What is finished? What is finished? The purpose of Jesus Christ coming in this world. Why he came? One of the most important reason why he came was first john chapter 3 verse 8 jesus christ came in this world to destroy all the works of the devil he came to nullify to diminish to demolish to dissolve all the power of the enemy of the power of the devil my brother my sister are you suffering with the oh torment of the devil of demonic people, of the evil, wicked people, crooked people, jealous people. Jesus came to destroy the power of darkness, of the devil, of death. Uh, yes, John chapter 10 verse 10 says, Jesus came to give us life, life, abundant life. Yes, he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He deeply cares for you. He came to save sinners. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15. Are you facing some sinful addiction? Pornography? Oh, unhealthy relationship? Some kind of addictions for gambling, smoking, drinking, drugs? Jesus Christ shed his last drop of blood for you. For you, his blood is pure, his blood is precious, his blood is powerful and it cleanses us from all sin. First John chapter 1 verse 7 says, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, every sin. You're washed as white as snow. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me full again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes us white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes, the work of Jesus was finished. Of taking the sin upon himself, he became a man of sin, a man of sorrows just to give us peace in order to turn all our sorrow into joy. John chapter 16 verse 20 says, All your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Yes, your mourning into dancing. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, your shame will be turned into honor. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7 says, Instead of your shame, you will have double, double, double honor. Japania chapter 3 verse 19 and 20. Oh, wherever, in whichever place you are put to shame, the same place God will give you praise, fame, honor. Instead, God will turn your shame into fame. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Praise Him. Oh, Jesus, magnify Jesus. Glorify Jesus, His worthy, worthy. The Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world is worthy. The Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, 
the light of the world, the Lord of glory, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of all lords. Oh, the lily of the valley. Hallelujah. He will enlighten your darkness. Praise him. Magnify him. Glorify him. Thank you, Jesus. He took all your sickness. Oh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. He took all your sickness, all your infirmities. He took in order to give you divine health, divine healing. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22. As you hear the word of God, as you read the word of God. Oh, the word of God is the best medicine. Take it, take it, take it. Hallelujah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the God, our heavenly father. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4 says, yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Jesus Christ tasted the bitterness of death for you. The last word Jesus said, Father, into your hands my come, I commit my spirit. That means life and death belongs to Jesus. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I myself lay down my life for my sheep. John chapter 10 verse 11, nobody takes by force, I myself lay it down. Jesus has the power over the life and death. My brother, my sister, your time on this earth is in the hands of Jesus. Psalm 31 verse 15 says, my times are in your hand. Revelation chapter 1 verse 17 and 18. Oh, behold, I was dead, but now I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and the hell. Yes, yes. He's the first and the last. He's the alpha and the omega. The beginning and the end. The one who is. The one who was. The one who is to come. The bride and the morning star. The living water. The living word. The way, the truth and the life. The everlasting father. The prince of peace. The mighty God. Oh, wonderful counselor. Everlasting Father, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Oh Jehovah Jireh, Hallelujah, Adonai, El Shaddai, yes, yes, praise Him, magnify Him, glorify Him, thank you Jesus, thank you Father. Let's pray, close our eyes, the presence of Jesus is amongst us Lord, thank you Father, oh yes, 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 yes. His presence is filling you. His presence is filling you. Oh, yes. Oh, He's blessing you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh, my Father, for giving us your Son, leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son, leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, oh, for sinner slain. Thank you, oh, my Father, for giving us your Son, leaving you spirit till the work on earth is done. Look at the cross, my brother. My sister, look at the cross. The blood is oozing out. The blood is flowing from the Emmanuel's vein. Hallelujah. And sinners plunged beneath the blood. Oh, wash all their oh, sins away. Thank you, Lord. Oh, the blood. Of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes white 
has no power in the blood of Jesus. Healing in the blood of Jesus. Victory in the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Look at the cross. You will be saved. You will be healed. You will be delivered. You will be redeemed from all your problems, from all your destruction, from all the danger, from all the diseases. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, precious, wonderful, sweet, mighty, glorious Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sweet, wonderful Jesus. Mighty and glorious Jesus. Embrace every brother. Embrace every sister. Kiss them. Bless them. Heal them, Father. Oh, yes, Father. Yes, Father. Let them uh, meditate on the suffering and the sorrow of Jesus uh, because, uh, oh, it will bring healing, joy, strength to their heart and to their life, miracles in their life, Lord. Yes, also we, oh, remember the Passion of Christ movie that was made, Lord Jesus. Uh, and, uh, oh, we want to watch it, Lord. Yes, again and again, Lord, to remember your uh, suffering and sorrow, Lord, the Passion of Christ movie, the by which uh, by watching that movie, Passion of Christ, so many of souls were saved. Uh, so many of the murderers, so many of adulterers repented and accepted you, Lord Jesus. Help us, help us to share your love, to share your sorrow and suffering on the cross for everyone. Oh, to everyone, Lord, help us, Lord Jesus. Bless us all because we pray. In the helping, um, highest, honoring, um, holy, oh, name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was a profound and